He was an atheist marrying a Catholic woman. And in a meeting with him, I asked him to tell me about himself, and he talked about all the stuff he liked to do, that he had gone back to school, how much he enjoyed working out, and he was obviously very fit, and how he'd recently gone back to playing the piano again, something he hadn't done since high school. And I said, if you don't mind me asking, why do you do what you do? From the perspective of being an atheist, why do you do what you do? And his answer was, I do that to better myself, to realize my potential, and to grow as a person. Why do you do what you do? It strikes me that perhaps that is the question that lies at the heart of what it means to be a believer. And that the answer to that question on some level differentiates the atheist and the believer. Because while the atheist might come to the same answer that I do, for the believers, there is only one answer. Why do we do what we do all day? Is it to become better persons who've realized our potential and grown into full human beings? I mean, those answers are good, huh? But for us, every bite of food we take, every book we read, the exercise we do, the friends we choose, the money we earn, the vacations we take, while fine in themselves, are all so that. They're all so that we can serve, that we can serve others. It's not about us shining, about helping others to shine. It's about putting our lives at the service of others that they might realize their potential and then that they might serve as well. And for us to understand to be my best and true self is only found when my life is at the service of others, at the service of this world. My brothers and sisters, in all of that, we find our why. Why we are and why we do what we do. Jesus, in his early years, studied, prayed, developed himself as a person. Why? So that he could then, when it was time, serve. You read the gospel, that's what he did. He poured his life out. And today, in this gospel, he serves Peter's mother-in-law when she was ill. Prays for her. Heals her. And then what does she do after she's healed? She gets up and what? Did you hear what she does? She goes and starts to serve the people gathered there. Her cure was not just for her. It was to set her free to go do what was hers to do, and that was to serve others. I think that this understanding of what it means to do what we do is something that would make atheists envious sometimes. When you stand at the void, at the, at the foot of the abyss, of what seems like an emptiness, no, we have meaning to our lives. We have a why. And our why is to serve. And that's why we do what we do. In just a moment, we will offer the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. If you are to receive that sacrament today, I want to say a few words about your service. There's this tendency when we're ill or diminished in some capacity to think we don't have much use anymore, huh? What good am I when I can't do what I always do, huh? 
I can't earn a job, I can't fix this, I can't help there, yeah. But our faith tells us clearly that we have a dignity that is in no way diminished by illness, incapacity, or even by death. Huh? And if you come forward for us to anoint you, you give us a gift already by allowing us to serve you. We grew up in a culture that sometimes makes it difficult to receive love like that. And you give us a gift even by letting us serve you and love you and pray for you. And then, as part of the prayer, there's always healing. And sometimes there is even a cure, which would be the lesser of the two, but it sometimes happens, and we pray for that. And if you are cured of the illnesses or ailments that are yours, well, then what's your job? Just like Peter's mother-in-law. Go serve, huh? You were healed, that cured that you might go serve. I also would imagine that there are a number who would come forward to be prayed over whose illness might lead to your death. If that is you, I remind you of the dignity that is yours each step of the way. I'm one of those who still needs your prayers. Huh? We need you. Pray for us. Connect the suffering that is yours to the suffering of Jesus on the cross and hold us before God. And when the time comes, if it does for you, that you are incapacitated in such a way that there's very little that you can do, you still can draw love out of us. And then, if it should be that this leads to your death, you're not done, because when you get to the life beyond this life, we still need you, still pray for us, and we still love you. For such is our why. It is ours to serve.